Here's the idea. I'm going to spend a couple days and try to make a little 3D RPG game, like Breath of the Wild or Dragon Age, and I'll be implementing it 100% from scratch. Okay, so I'm allowed to steal my own code, if I already wrote it. So I'm totally just going to copy-paste the setup code from a previous tutorial, and that gives us a basic plane and skybox. Nothing special. Now, a lot of game engines, Unity included, use an entity component style architecture, which really lends itself well to reuse. I like working with this style, but of course, since we're working in JavaScript, we have nothing. So let's make one. How hard can it be, right? I'm just going to crap out a quick one. It'll be a pure component-based system as opposed to the newer entity component systems, but in reality, there's not much API surface to these things. An entity is a glorified array of components, with some accessors and management functions, and that's it. And once we have one, the first thing we want to do is make a player controller and third-person camera. Luckily again, I can just steal from myself, again. We already made these in a previous tutorial. These are getting a quick copy-paste right into their own components. So I just need to dump in the player controller code and wrap it all up into this player basic controller component and that gives us a fully working walking character. Same thing with the camera. We covered that previously in third-person cameras, and so again, I'll just copy-paste this shamelessly into the project, calling it third-person camera. The gist of the code is that you're tracking a spot just ahead of the character, smoothly interpolating the camera each frame towards the ideal spot. And once we have an entity in the world set up with this component, you've got a walking character with the camera trailing behind them. An RPG with no weapons would be boring though, so let's get a sword into this guy's hands. Of course, we'll be doing this as a component, because then we'll get to swap out other weapons and all that jazz. So we're declaring an equip weapon component, and the goal here is just to load the specified weapon and then root it to the model's hand in the skeleton. Things rarely work on the first try, so I ended up working through a few problems, but eventually we got this guy running around with a sword in his hand. Getting an attack animation is the natural progression here, and luckily we already had made a dance state in the finite state machine. So this is mostly going to be a search and replace job. A few quick renames later and we have an attack state and I can swing the sword around. I decided the next thing to do was to jazz up the world a bit, add some trees and stuff. So obviously, make the world a whole lot bigger first. Okay, that looks good. I also don't want to pay actual money for this. Luckily, I know people post free stuff in the game dev subreddit all the time, so I can just search there. I looked at a few posts, and this guy Quaternius has some cool looking stuff. I should be able to come back here for a bunch of assets. Anyway, we need some foliage and stuff, so I took this nature pack. Now, for the code, normally I'd make some sort of render component that's reusable, but uh, that requires planning, so I'm just going to copy paste the code and create a standalone static model component. Future Simon will have to clean this up. Then you spawn a bunch in the world at random spots, and voila! You have the exact same tree stamped out a whole bunch of times. That nature pack didn't just come with birch trees, so, so I'll just pick a few more of these at random. Then we just need to write some quick code to randomly pick from a few of the ones we chose. And now we've got like a forest or something. The code is pretty bad, but luckily we didn't spawn a tree right over our standing spot. There's also some really nice low poly clouds on the site, so let's go with those. This is just a straight up copy paste of the loop that spawns trees, but we'll spawn these nice and high. And that gives us, mm, well, they're kind of hard to see actually. White on white wasn't the best color choice on my part. My bad. Let's add a sky. I've done complete realistic sky scattering simulations before, but let's do this the lazy way. 3JS has an example with a super simple and decent looking sky, so I'm just going to lift that directly into our project. Basically, it's just a sky sphere, and it blends with the fog near the horizon. So in the distance, you get a blending between the fog and the sky color. That's all good. We have the sky in. Let's move on to inventories. A lot of RPG-style games have something like this, like a, a backpack where you can manage items you pick up and stuff. I'd like to do the same thing here. Pop up a menu with a grid of items and let you drag stuff around. Since this is JavaScript and the web, I'll just code this up using HTML. I just need to get a button down in the bottom center of the screen. I kind of hate HTML, so I mostly use divs and flexbox for everything. You have been warned. This is not best practices. I ended up with a black button. Uh, it's a bit plain, so I checked out game icons. And there's a ton of really neat icons on there. I nabbed a quick 
backpack icon and stuck it into the game. If I have time, I'll go back and color it and make it look nicer. Now, to make the actual UI, I fired up GIMP to get a good character shot of the model I'm using. Then it's off to write some incredibly bad HTML. This is just a zillion divs laid out in a grid and given some IDs so I can refer to them from the code later. But it looks good. Now we need some actual logic for this thing. I created a quick UI controller component and dumped some logic in there for opening and closing the menu and created a UI entity in the main file. Now it opens and closes like we want, but we want actual stuff to hoard. So we create a new inventory controller and inventory item components. Inventory item is mostly just to hold information about a specific item in the inventory. And inventory controller handles the logic of choosing a slot, updating the UI with the icon, that kind of thing. Just bookkeeping, really. Then, of course, we define a few items in the world and give them to the player. And as you can see, these items now show up in the inventory. Also, I help myself to a few more icons from game icons. Next, I want to make it so you can drag them around. That's pretty easy to do in HTML, at least I've heard. I have no idea how to actually do it, but the tutorials don't look that hard. I just seem to need to add this draggable property to a lot of the elements that I want to drag, and then in the inventory controller, I'm supposed to just need to go and set the on drag and on drop event handlers. And that should let me move things around in the inventory. I got it going after a few tries. They were all screw ups in my logic for swapping the items. Now let's make some stats, because RPGs love having character stats. I'll make it pretty simple. We'll pop up a menu here, and we'll just list out all of the stats on the left and their values on the right. And of course, we'll have to add both the HTML code followed by some sort of health component that will update the UI. And finally, back to game icons to help myself to a nice stats icon. Looking good, we have stats now. I kinda wanna add some small details like tooltips, and again, since this is HTML, it's not supposed to be super hard. I looked up a few tutorials, added some quick divs and junk to my HTML code, and pretty soon I had a little floating tooltip. And of course, once that was done, I added full descriptions for all the different stats. These are all complete nonsense, except for strength. I actually use that to do a bit of damage calculation. The rest are just gibberish for now. Okay, let's get moving a bit more and try to add some more enemies. As I mentioned before, I don't want to spend any money on this, so I'm going to go back to Quaternius for some more free model goodness. There's a monster pack here, so let's grab it. In the code, I need to define a new component for the NPC that will eventually house the AI and logic. So I'm just going to go with NPC controller for now, and this is going to be a shameless copy-paste of the player controller component, with some modifications to change the finite state machine and customize it a bit for generic NPCs. Of course, you also need to add an entity in main, so I just did that quickly. There we go. The ghost is there now, just kind of sitting there, doing nothing. So let's go back and add some primitive AI, just to get it to chase us and attack. This is going to be insanely simple, because the player can already move and attack, so the plan here is just to use that exact same code. But the AI will be pressing the keyboard buttons instead. Simple, huh? And to find out what's close by, we'll just use the spatial grid that we coded up a few weeks ago. So we just drop it into a component, and off we go. This was supposed to be pretty simple, and I'd like to say this worked on the first try, but I screwed this up pretty badly. I ended up spending more time on this than I would have liked. But eventually I got it working though, so yay. But they just swing at each other. This is kind of boring. Let's make them hurt each other. What I need to do is make an attack controller component, and its job is really simple. It watches the attack animation and looks for a specific time in the animation, and then sends some damage. Alright, so now I can take a few swings, and I can totally kill the ghost. And that also means that the ghost can kill me. Uh, eventually. I didn't make it very strong. One problem is that it's hard to tell what's happening though. It would be nice if we had some UI in the corner. A lot of games draw a little picture of the guy or maybe have some health bars or whatever. So I'll just quickly draw one myself using the character's image and we'll make it host a health bar. Then some basic HTML just to position the image in the top left corner of the screen and we of course need to hook up the health component so that it updates the UI. Awesome. Now we can watch the ghost murder me in real time. But I also want to see how much health the ghost has. A lot of games do something like this, where they float a little health bar above the enemy's head. 
This should be pretty simple. Conceptually, it's just a quad that floats over the enemy's position and displays their health somehow. Like maybe green to red as it goes down and shrinking the bar, or blacking out part of it, or whatever. It took a little bit of iteration, had to work through getting it to face me, getting it look roughly right, uh, animating it a bit so the health bar kind of smoothly drops down, but eventually it didn't look so terrible. With that out of the way, the next goal is to add a leveling up system. And I'm not going to overthink this too much. What I basically need is to accumulate experience points and then play a small effect. I already made a particle system in a previous video, so let's just dump that right into the game as a component. I'll make two components now. One is the level up spawner, whose job is to make these level up entities, and the other is the actual level up effect itself that gets spawned. Once those are hooked up, you can watch the stats go up as I kill this guy. Also, the effect goes off, so we get some stars and stuff. Okay, so the last thing to do to make this more RPG-ish, we need quests. You always have a zillion quests to do in any RPG game, so we gotta add this. Back to Mixamo to help myself to another free model. I just want someone to stand around to deliver some quest lines, so pretty much anybody will do. As long as they fit in with the general fantasy theme, of course. I just declared another entity in the world with the new model and plopped her right down beside my spawn point. Can't really do anything, but she's there at least. I want to make it so that when you click on her, she delivers some lines and adds them to your quest journal. And this should be really easy since 3GS has this Raycaster class. All I have to do is integrate it into the game and it doesn't seem to be working. I just wanted it to print a small message to the console, but nothing is happening. As it turns out, this class doesn't work with skin meshes, so let's write it ourselves. Instead of using the Raycaster and all the meshes, I'll just go ahead and find all of the pickable objects nearby, and then I'll make collision boxes out of all of them. After that, I can do Ray Box Collision Detection to see which one I clicked on. It's not going to be even close to perfect, but at least it should work. Now when I load the world up, I can walk up to the NPC and click on her, and it works like expected. Good enough, so I'll declare job done. Okay, let's get some quest UI up on the screen next. So if I click on the NPC, it'll bring up some sort of dialogue describing the quest, so I just wrote some quick HTML to put a dialogue box in the middle of the screen. Of course, you actually need a quest of some sort, so let's make a quest component, and I'll hard code the first quest in here. The job of this component is to get notified when the NPC is picked, and then show the quest dialog, adding the title and body of the quest text. And of course, I'll have to write a quick quest description so that it shows up in the game. Now that's hooked up, I have this little quest journal thing that can bring up. It's empty now, but now I can go click on the NPC. When I do that, she shows some quest description stuff, and the quest now shows up in my quest log, so I can review the quest if I need to. This is pretty cool. Most of the basic elements of an RPG are in place. Let's go and add some more monsters to the world. Since we already had monsters before, all I'm doing here is making a big loop where I'll spawn like a hundred more. That Quaternius package I downloaded came with like two dozen different monsters, so I'm just going to select a few more of them and randomly choose between them. I'll also randomly scatter them throughout the world so they don't just swarm me and kill me right away. And there we go. There's a whole bunch of monsters all over and I can run around and kill them. It would be cool if I gave them loot or something. Maybe I'll revisit this and have it so that you can go and loot the corpse looking for stuff. Also, yeah, there's uh, still a lot of bugs to work out. Anyway, that's as far as I got before I kind of ran out of time. With a bit more work, this could maybe be half decent. Some height map terrain, some hand-placed NPCs in towns and shops and stuff. Could look good. I'll clean the code up and throw it up on GitHub, so look for it there. If you decide to use this to make something like your own project, I'd love to see what you end up making. Until next time, cheers.